see if it works. Got her? Got it? Oh, well, who knows why? Okay, okay. Yes, what would you like me to say?
Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Sunday morning. We give thanks to God that you've been gathered by the Holy Spirit to receive the good news of God's grace and peace for you and for all of us this day. I have all my cables all twisted up. Um, some announcements of our life together. We, um, let me find that piece of paper. Today between services, we will be having, Pastor Rossi will be leading the second part of the discussion on the mutual conversation and consolation of the saints. Even if you didn't go to last week's, feel free to join in on that adult education opportunity. And then after second service today, um, if you want to come back for lunch, and then we're, um, they're having a, we're starting a new Grieving with Grace group. So even if you're part of the first one, you're welcome to come and be part of this one, but there'll be a, a lunch right after second service, and then at about 1245, we'll have an hour of, of grief support, and that is for um, whatever loss that you may be experiencing. And it's not just um, for Creator members, it's for anybody in the community. We'll be doing that once a month, so if this one doesn't work for you, you can plan on next month as well. We have a congregational meeting next Sunday between services where we'll be celebrating the, the past year of ministry together and also be voting in our nominating committee for this next session as well. Any other announcements that I'm missing? Okay. Well, please rise as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The light has come into the world and no darkness can overcome it. Let us confess our need for God's mercy. Mighty and loving God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ. In your mercy, cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our hearts, and everything that we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ came to proclaim release to the captives and freedom to prisoners. Therefore, I proclaim to you by the authority of Christ that you are freed. 
And as a called minister of his church, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. Merciful God, you show your mercy by calling us to you when we are wandering and wondering aimlessly. We give you thanks that you show up in our lives without our plea. You know what we are going through without our prayer, and you give us faith where there is none. Continue to give us your gifts of mercy, grace, and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> we will do the epiphany litany responsively. Praise the Lord. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in, behind, and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Your eyes saw my unfounded substance. In your book were written every one of them, days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Praise the Lord.
first reading is from 1 Samuel, the third chapter. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So Samuel went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. The word of the Lord. Second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for the food. And God will destroy both, one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price." So glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The word of the Lord. Well, now I invite any of the children who are here this morning to come forward. And we'll talk a little bit about what's going on this morning in our readings, especially in our gospel reading. All right, so there is, we are going to uh, read, the gospel reading is about Philip and Nathaniel, and before what we are going to read this morning, there is the calling of other disciples, and this week we have the calling of um, other disciples. So Jesus is calling everywhere and everyone to be his disciples. Do you know what a disciple is? What is the word disciple? A student, yeah, a student, a follower. So then that's what Jesus is doing. And Jesus says, come follow me. And do you think that uh, those disciples knew Jesus before? No, they did not know Jesus before. So what needed to happen? So um, let me ask you something. Um, Do you live by yourselves in your own place? Are you by, your, by yourself? Do you cook your own meals? 
No? Uh, do you wash your own clothes? No, probably not. Do you um, go to work? And do you drive your own car? No, right? So do you know that you have a person, a grown-up, with you in your house, right? Yeah, or maybe at school, maybe at church there are other grown-ups. And uh, when you don't see them, do you know that they, that they are still there? Do you know, how do you know that uh, your parents are at home or that they are there for you? What do you think? Because they might uh, feed you, maybe. That's very important. They might clothe you. They might say, you got to go to school, right? So they know you, and you know them, and you know they are there for you, right? So it is with Philip and Nathaniel that we are going to hear about that, Nathaniel, that Philip is so excited. He did not know Jesus. And Jesus comes calling, and then Nathaniel, uh, uh, Philip says, We have found the Lord. And Jesus was the one looking for him and looking for Nathaniel and for everyone. And that's how Philip knows that Jesus is there for him. So how do we know that Jesus is there for us? Well, we know that he is for us because we hear his word. Every time we gather here, we hear his word. And he says, I know you. And do you think that's always a good news? When somebody says, well, I know you. Is that good news? And you're like, well, what do you know about me? Right? Maybe, do you know everything? Or you just not know something about me? Right? We kind of get worried. But with Jesus, when he says, I know you and I have chosen you, it's because he has mercy on us. He loves us. And he says, you are mine. No matter what you have done, no matter who you are, you are mine. All right? And he comes looking for us, and he comes calling for us, and he comes searching for us, and he finds us. So that's the good news of the gospel for us every single day. All right? Let's pray. Dear and gracious God, we give you thanks for calling us in our baptism, for choosing us in the waters, in the living waters that you have given us in Christ Jesus. We ask you that you continue to be with us, that you continue calling us, that you continue making us your own now and always. And continue to be with all of the families here and uh, those who are not here uh, as well. And we pray that you uh, are with us this week in uh, whatever we uh, have going on in our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back. Please stand for a gospel acclamation. Gospel from John, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prof prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to, of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Do you believe because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree? 
you will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, today we hear Jesus calling his disciples, which can be overwhelming a lot of the times for us. It gets a little intimidating as we just heard Jesus calling his disciples, not asking them whether they would like to follow him or if they would consider being his disciples. Jesus did not come to them saying, would you pretty please come and be my disciples? No, he just says, follow me. He simply calls them. And this can be a bit intense for us because when you get chosen for something, you, when you are asked to do something, you, are usually, you usually get a little nervous. What am I being put into? What position am I being put into? What am I uh, being asked to agree to? Is it good for me or not? Is it going to come and create an obstacle in my own routine or not? So you're usually asked, could you please help with this or that or the other? Or there might be a general invitation, especially at church or even at work or in your community, when they say, we need help with something and we need volunteers. And you say, yeah, that's very true. Yeah, who, who, might, who might be available <laughs> to volunteer, right? I, I hope somebody comes forward. But then you have another choice. You say, then you can decide to either show or not your credentials. You can see if you are qualified to fulfill such request. And most importantly, you can say yes. You can say no. You can say maybe or even let me think about it. Or in church we might say, let me pray about it, right? <laughs> and even when you are voluntold, you can still potentially find a way out. It might even be a little bit harder to get yourself off the hook if the person asking might be a relative, might be your spouse, might be a very close friend. But even then, in theory, you might still have a chance for a way out. You have a choice. But today, it is not so with Jesus. In this case, none of this applies. Jesus comes as the Lord and King that he is. And when he calls, he takes away any choice you might think you have. When he calls, he puts you in the corner with him and before you know it, you are on your way someplace, in ventures of which you have no measure or any idea where you're going. When Jesus calls you, you are already going along the way, tucking your shirt in your pants, hopping on one foot, putting on your shoe, and maybe trying to calm your hair, asking Jesus, where are we going, Lord? I, I'm coming, but I don't know what or where or what we're doing. But the disciples haven't figured this out yet. You can hear that when one of the disciples says, we have found the Lord. Yeah, mm-hmm. But we know who did the finding. We know who did the choosing, and we know how it all works. Psalm 139 gives us a great promise. How God knows us to the very core. 
even when we are sitting down and when we are rising up, and he even knows our thoughts from afar. It is not such a great news, and it should scare the socks off of you when you do not know the gospel. And the despair of your sin as is at the forefront of your mind. It is here where you wish God would give you just maybe a teeny, teeny little space for maybe a secret or two. But even then, God's promise is to call you out of your darkness into his light, out of your sin into his righteousness, and out of your death into his everlasting life. So, you do know the gospel, and you can take refuge in him. But before we go diving headfirst into the life-given gospel, let us get back to the gospel reading, to Jesus' calling of the disciples. And even though you know, you do know the gospel, you do know God's promises for you in Christ Jesus, we can't sometimes uh, but help ourselves fall into our old ways, just like Philip and Nathaniel. Even though you know this promise, and most importantly, you do know the promise giver, it is hard for us in our very nature to let go, to truly live fully into the saying, give credit where credit is due. Between complete trust in God and give credit what, where credit is due, these are very often the two most difficult and hardest things for us to do, to trust God completely and to not try to take credit for something we didn't do. We like trusting ourselves instead before we trust anybody else. And we like getting credit for things that we have not even done ourselves. We like to be given credit, that is for sure, even if it is only by association. If we are even near the vicinity of something we consider important happened, we like to take some credit, if not the whole credit. I was there, we say, therefore it is as if I did it myself. And this reminded me of when I was a little kid. My father brought home my very first pet. And he was a little chihuahua dog, cute little chihuahua dog. And I liked playing with him. But then my father thought, not long after getting him, that my dog needed a friend. And my father decided, well, I'll just get another chihuahua dog for my, my dog's pet. And so you get an idea. Right in the back of our family house, there was an open field. And as it usually happens with open fields, well, you know that there are critters out there. And very often, there are mice. So then, every so often, we would have a problem with mice. And then so they would come into the house and then would be a pest and we would try to get rid of them. But lo and behold, unbeknownst to us, the second of my chihuahua dogs happened to be a hunter. What a surprise. What a good surprise. So every time this dog would catch a mouse, she would bring it proudly to our feet to show her catch. We, of course, did not want the dead mouse in the house, but we were very happy that she was taking care of the problem until one day. One day, after several months, we realized that the second dog was, in fact, not the hunter. It was actually the first dog to our surprise, the first dog had been catching all the mice all this time. 
but he would not take any credit for it. He did not even fight the second dog when she brought their cat, showing it off to us. He did not care if he was given credit for his catch or not. He was just doing his job, and we were happy about it. So if they were happy about it, we were happy about it. No problem. But now coming back to Philip, it wasn't in that way with Philip, as it is not with us. This actually happens with us more often than we care to admit. When Jesus comes to Philip and says to him, follow me, Jesus is the one who already knew Philip and the other disciples. Jesus knew who Philip was. Jesus knew who he was looking for. Jesus knew where he would find Philip. And Jesus knew Philip's calling and what this calling would be before even Philip had any idea. Sure, Philip knew about the one Moses and the prophets wrote about, but that was it. They did not have social media back then to look up what this Jesus of Nazareth looked like. They only had scrolls to read from. But Jesus knew, and that is the important part. But the irony is that when Philip gets all excited, because remember, in those days, the word of the Lord was not very common, then he not only hears the word, but he sees the word made flesh. And he comes to Nathanael and uses the very well-known royal we and tells him, we have found Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, very astute of Philip. We have found him. Philip did not waste any time and gave himself all the credit by association. Come and see, we have found him, says Philip to Nathanael. But notice here, Jesus does not get into a fight with Philip. Jesus does not say, you liar. Jesus does not say, at least not this time, you did not find me, but I found you. Before Nathanael reaches Jesus to confirm that in fact, the one that Philip found was Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus greets Nathanael and says, I know you. In fact, I have known you from long ago. You are an an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Naturally, Nathanael is surprised and asks, How do you know me? Had Jesus hacked Nathanael's social media accounts, perhaps? (laughs) Had Jesus done a background check on Nathanael? Oh, boy. But no, Jesus says, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Uh Uh-oh. This can be very good news or very, very bad news. It would be one thing if, if someone you do not know approached you and said, I know what you did last summer. Or, I know what you did last week, which in and of itself is already very creepy. But you would still be skeptical about it, questioning and wondering, does this person really know me? Does this person is really truthful about this? But when you hear these words coming from Jesus' lips, if you feel like you are doing well, then there is nothing you should be worried about, right? But what about if you are not doing so well in your life, especially in your Christian life? Well, these would not be very good news. You would be very worried. What if Jesus saw what I did, what I did not do? 
the things that I said. Oh, and the thoughts that I thought. Not very good news to say the least. If this was about Christ's judgment of your faithfulness, of your holiness, of your sanctification, of your commitment to God, of your discipleship as a follower of Jesus, oh boy, I'd be worried too. I would be worried about the questions, have you answered God's calling to serve God, your church, and your neighbor? Have you taken up your cross and followed him? Have you listened to his calling for justice and love and mercy in this world? And last but not least, have you responded well to this great gift of the gospel for you? Very worrisome questions and things to consider indeed. However, these are not the things that Jesus is interested in. These are not the questions that Jesus is looking answers to. Rather, the great news of the gospel is that Jesus already knows you. Jesus already knows your sin. Jesus already knows your unfaith. Jesus already knows about your unholy thoughts and many a time unholy words. Jesus already knows about the things that you have done and the things that you have left undone. And Jesus already knows that you have not loved him with your whole heart and that you have not loved your neighbor as ourselves. Jesus knows it all to the very little detail, to the very last detail of your life, of your heart, and of your mind. But Jesus does not come calling you for the great things that you have accomplished. He does not come calling you because you were so holy and so perfect and so nice to your neighbor. But quite the contrary, Jesus comes calling you by name, knowing you need him as your Lord and as your Savior, not as a rabbi, as Philip says, Rabbi, no, not as a teacher, not as a Moses 2.0, and much less as a super Moses with all the demands of the law in your hearts and in your minds and in your life. Instead, in his divine goodness and mercy, he already knows you. He is the one coming to you. He is the one looking for you. And he is the one finding you. He is not interested in playing hide and seek with you. He has already found you, and he is the one calling you. He is the one claiming you, and he is the one justifying you, saying, you are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter, with whom I am very well pleased. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart. I formed your inward parts. I knitted you together in your mother's womb. And in your baptism, guess what? I have chosen you. And I have clothed you in my righteousness. This is where God knowing you to your very core is actually good news. When you know that you cannot hide from God's spirit and that you cannot flee from his presence. Even in this life, when you are doing well and you ascend to heaven and you feel like you are in cloud nine, he is there. And when you descend into Sheol, when you are in the worst hell of a life, he is there also. From among the millions and billions of people in the whole wide world, God knows you by name. That is a promise. When he calls you, you are mine. In your baptism, you have been given such a great promise, a sure promise. You have been claimed 
and you have been made an heir by the forgiveness of your sin. You have Christ's own life now and always in salvation and the complete certainty that nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And for these we say, thanks be to God. Amen. confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, our gracious Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but that all would repent and believe the gospel. In the baptism of your Son, your salvation and your kingdom have been revealed to us. As this world passes away, give us your peace, that in your faithfulness you are the one who survives your church by the proclamation of the gospel. 
continue to sustain us by this very promise that no matter what our life circumstances might be, you are there in and with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, you have called your people and made them great prophets and disciples. Many times we want to be great and do great things, but we ask you to remind us that the greatest thing is not what we think we can do or the things we might accomplish, but that you have looked on us with grace and favor. As you found Samuel, Philip, Nathaniel, and the other prophets and disciples, we ask you to assure us and give us the certainty that you already know us when you seek us, that you find, that you claim, that you elect us and make us your children. Give us the confidence that as we call it, as you call us into our vocation, we can share the great, this great gift of faith with others so that they too can be comforted by your promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, preserve our nation with its elected leaders, that they may be servants and not rulers of the citizens of this land. Call to repentance those who have forgotten you. Be with our President Joe Biden, Governor Inslee, and all who serve the good of the people in this country. Do not let disaster fall on us, but preserve us in your peace and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, turn us from distracting anxiety and the dealings of the world that would draw our ears and hearts away from your blessed gospel. Give us confidence in the baptism you have already in the baptism you have already claimed us, that in his death and resurrection, Christ has bestowed on us his forgiveness of our sins, his life and his salvation. Graciously hold in your care and help those for whom we pray especially those suffering from illness, anxiety, hopelessness, and those mourning the death of a loved one. Give them the assurance that you are with them now and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Before we collect our offering, I want to give a little bit of a, a heads up about our song. It's called Sing We Now of Christmas. And you might go, but it's Epiphany. Well, Epiphany is the manifestation of our Lord. And one of the ways that God is most manifest is in the incarnation. And also our choir is ready to sing the song today. So we, in, we are excited to hear Sing We Now of Christmas as we receive our offering.
Please rise as you are able. And let us pray. Generous God, you have given us life, this community, and you have provided everything we need from day to day. Give us listening ears to hear your word and gracious hearts to help our neighbor. Help us bring your gifts of word and deed to share your hope and blessings wherever we go. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the communion assistants to come forward. We'll be communing up here at the altar. If you need gluten-free communion, let me know. The lighter liquid is grape juice and the darker is wine. If you're not yet communing and would like to come forward for a blessing, keep your hands to your side and I'll give you that blessing in the name of our Lord. These are God's gifts for you, God's people. Come. This 
is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. May God bless you and keep you now and always. God loves you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, now let, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled in my hearing. My eyes have seen, my mouth has tasted, and my ears have heard your salvation, which you have prepared for us a light for the revelation of your abundance and overflowing mercy and grace for us. Through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Go now in peace, for God's word has been fulfilled in your hearing. You have heard the salvation of our Lord, which he has prepared for you. The Lord dispels the shadows of your nights and the light with the light of his salvation. Be
Christ is your light. Thanks be to God.